Hello, this is a Bluthner Star 4A that's 166 centimetres long, 5 foot 5 and a half inches, made in 1929. It's just come into stock and uh, want to look at it to see what sort of work would improve the piano. Now first of all we can tell looking at the pedals that it's had uh, quite a bit of use. They're quite high pedals and that's why that's tended to, worn, uh, to wear because of the angle of the pedals. Um, we might be able to improve that. But uh, the piano has been well used, uh, as you'd expect from top quality Blutner. They're very often well, very well used. There's quite a bit of leg room, by the way, and that's encouraging. Just going up to the, the keys here. They are ivory keys, uh, good quality. There's one, there's one chip here which we can repair. The, these little cracks here, you can't really get rid of those, unfortunately, um, unless you change the key top, but it's usually best to leave them, and they don't tend to get any worse anyway, and none of them have been taken off and been stuck back on, which is encouraging. Now, the case is a matte finish. Um, very well done, actually, and I uh, don't know if you can pick up the colour from the video, but it's, it looks a bit, it looks a bit uh, yellower to me on the video than it looks in live. It's a slightly redder colour, I think. Maybe the photos we've taken will show it up better. But you can see the grain, very uh, flame mahogany or fiddleback mahogany, sometimes they call it. But this is the typical grain of blueness of that period. Uh, they did make a lot of small grand pianos, but the five foot five one is not nearly as common as I'd like it to be. This, it's the five foot one that's very common. And this one is just slightly bigger and has therefore more, res more resonance, especially in the bass. These are original strings, original tuning pins. We've said many times before the, the lever's floppy, it's because the tuning pin's very small. This is standard medium star, um, and that's good. Um, these top manufacturers often use very small tuning pins, which is helpful. The inside, obviously, we're going to clean up a bit, but generally the case is in, is in good, well, the case is perfect. The frame is in very good condition too. Um, there's the, always on the Bluton as you get the serial number underneath the badge above it. And the last date is usually near the date of the piano. The last one on this one seems to be 1922. I haven't shown this on any videos before. 1865, they got a prize, prize there, uh, Paris. You can see the different places that they, they got prizes in. And uh, the Melbourne there, Australia. And the, that's an extremely respected firm. In many ways, the very best pianos they made. And I think many technicians would agree the tone of them is so superb and uh, the construction is, is very, very stable. They stay in tune extremely well. Now, this is slightly longer than the model uh, five, four, which is the most common one. They're more resonant, I think. But there aren't nearly as many as there are model four, so very pleased to get hold of this one. And a beautiful bass sound. So the, uh, the original Bluton strings, pretty certain about that. Uh, as I say, the tuning pins are original, so the strings are original. We kept extremely well in terms of the acoustics of the piano to have tight pins. Uh, this is typical coning that they do. For, this is typical Blutner. There's the other end of the strings. So just uh, haven't shown this on other videos too. I don't think the crimping kind of, I suppose you call it crimping, they do here is typical Blutner. Um, it's to stop the winding coming loose because when winding coming lo comes loose, you, you can even often get a very thin tone and also it can actually buzz too. You have to uh, twist the string if you get that problem or crimp it a bit, little bit yourself. Now the, the weight of the keys is, is too heavy. Um, there's other issues we're going to have to look at anyway, but as soon as I show you this, because we do weigh keys, 58 grams, that is, and should be really, well, 50 to 50 plus or minus two or three. That's the kind of area that we're aiming for. All of that's acceptable to musicians, depending obviously on how, um, you know, if you want to, a lot of heavy practice, you might want it slightly heavier. But it's consistent, but it's too heavy. Uh, but that's not the only problem really. Around here, although it sounds reasonably good, because it's a blue, it'll sound very good anyway, it's not nearly as good as it could sound. It's very, it doesn't, it's not clear, it's not crisp sounding. Um, and we'll see why in a second. Now the problem is that these hammers have worn too thin. They've been refaced more than once, I would think, and that is very thin. There's three millimeters there um, on a, a new hammer, measured one, 
it's uh, around about seven, eight millimeters. We'll have a look at it compared to another hammer in a second. But this also, this is an unusual, it's not, it's not a normal roller system. So we decided that we we're gonna change the hammers, shanks and rollers on this piano to get new hammers and um, a smoother feel. Uh, these, these work obviously, uh, I've adjusted the, the springs weren't working properly on the other ones. Let's see, I've adjusted this one. So if you release it, it that goes up. The spring spring here is is adjusted just to try it out. We've got not got any problems with the springs, but it, it doesn't feel to me as smooth on this system as it does with a normal roller. So uh, as obviously we would do said many times before, hammers, shanks, and rollers, and put the right weight, the right size of hammer on. Then they'll have to reweight the whole action. So there's a new set of hammers on a Beckstein. We'll compare the, the size of that. You can see how much that's been refaced. And there's the Beckstein, seven millimeters approximately, I measured it at. These are new Renner hammers. Well, obviously these are Beckstein hammers, they're not the same. Uh, if you look at the roller though, you should compare that with what the Bluton has got at the moment. Now obviously Bluton chose that and it's, it's a good design, but um, changing it, it's easier for us to put the roller on. As long as we measure it correctly from the um, from where the jack is to the center pin, uh, which I've talked to a technician about and uh, he's confident about that. We've done these before, so we have changed them before. So uh, but a normal roller we find a bit smoother as well. So that's what we'll be doing and the action then should be perfect and we've got to regulate it and weight it and so on. So that's the assessment of a Blutner style 4A. Uh, it's 166 centimeters long, and, uh, five foot, five and a half inches, isn't it? and made in 1929. Such a good period for Blutners. If you're looking for a small piano, but not too small, it's just sli slightly bigger than the Style 4, which is 150 centimeters, which is much more common. Um, there are not nearly enough of these pianos around to meet the demand, so we're very pleased to get it in and can really thoroughly recommend it. The hammers are letting it down at the moment. Although even so, because it's a blue note, it still sounds beautiful. But they've been refaced uh, so much and we need to change them now. So hammers, shanks and rollers, as we've said many times before, will be changing. Now last of all, if you have a problem coming in, um, then we're quite used to it. It's getting more and more common for people to buy without coming in. Uh, obviously we do prefer you to come in, you can't feel the touch yourself. But we can guarantee you that this touch will be like any new piano really, we'll get it so refined when we've finished it, we'll reweight it. And there's many, many other things to do that I haven't mentioned earlier on. Reg fine regulation takes a long, long time. There's a five year guarantee on all our pianos and if you want to ask any more questions or maybe if you are able to you can do a live video with us we can show you different aspects of the piano or hopefully this video is enough though and uh, to, to show you just how good the piano is uh, I can thoroughly recommend it thank you very much for listening